Hi guys, it's a beautiful day once again and welcome back to Dexter's World Channel. I, as, as I speak today, my heart is full of joy, gladness and even inspiration because many people have booked us for their graduation, for their birthdays, for their baptismal and other special occasions in their family. And I'm so happy because today we have booked two occasions. The other one is the graduation and the other is the birthday party celebration. And this is the beginning of our desire to convert this farm into a business establishment. Where people, I always say that before, where people can gather and uh, enjoy the place and celebrate the meaningful occasions in their life. And uh, since it rained so hard last night, I, I ordered some gravels to uh, elevate the the road here it's muddy actually and i decided to just order some gravels we have don't we have no budget yet for the concreting of this and uh, we will utilize the gravel so that we can dry the the road and this is quite effective you will see that uh, it's already uh, dry the road is really muddy and the mud here is not that ordinary because it's uh, sticky very sticky it's a clay so this is the um, inspiration that i've got every day i mean developing this farm had been so challenging had been so crucial because it entails a lot of patience courage perseverance resiliency and uh, of course if you if you don't have those virtues you will quit actually because it's hard and difficult the main recipe that's been patronized by our customers here are the native chickens i couldn't imagine that we have that vast of market already of the native chickens i mean chicken adobo and chicken curry uh sinigang i mean you know chicken tinola this is the uh, delicacy that we can offer to our customers here and i'm so inspired to to breed and breed a lot of our native chickens you know native chickens are far more tastier than the chickens that can we can buy in the market these uh, broiler chickens because these broiler chickens the 45 days old is lacking in terms of um savor you know and uh, this native chicken is really very delicious so i am inspired to uh, breed a lot of these native chickens and i already have as well contacted my friends who have farm and i said that you can breed a lot of your native chickens because uh, we were able to upscale the interest of the people for patronizing you know the delicacies out of native chickens and in fact uh, for today we dressed some five or six native chickens and we will make that as chicken adobo the order of our senior citizen friends that are be coming over today and uh, i would like to tell you that this uh, endeavor is not difficult because we already have tried this in the past uh, what we only have to do is the proper housing for these native chickens. There are four elements that I would like to emphasize today about breeding native chickens. Of course, we have to consider the market. If you will breed and breed and you don't have market, then that would be a problem. But since native chickens had been uh, regarded as Filipino delicacy that's very delicious, then I don't have any problem about the market because you can sell any time of the day to the market. Uh, live weight is actually um, 
200 pesos per kilo. That's four dollars. So if you have uh, eight kilos, then of course you have uh, eight dollars. I mean, if you have two kilos, you have eight dollars, and that's already good. Well, uh, that's very cheap compared to if you will, if you will, if you are an American, that's very cheap. But here in our um, in our place, that's already a good price. So I am thinking about how to breed them, and of course, I'm recalling back my you know my experiences about native chicken and uh, the first thing that I can tell you is that we have to take care of the chicks because the chicks are very uh, sensitive so the chicks should be placed in a coop you will not release the chicks if they are not a uh, month old I mean you have to, to put them in a coop uh, 30 days and then you can start to slowly accustom them outside. So you can free range them. If you have the place, you can free range them. It's better. And then number two is that uh, be conscious about the things or the feeds that you are giving. Well, for me, I'm using grated coconuts, this asola, and uh, scrap, uh, you know, uh, I mean the kitchen scraps that would somehow lessen our expenses. And this is very effective. Asola is one of the effective feeds that you can also uh, give to your chickens. So we have discussed the market, we have discussed the, the chicks, and then of course, if you are breeding, so you have, to, you have two options actually, whether you will put them in, inside the big coop or you can just allow them in a free range. But, the downside of the free range is that there are many predators that can actually affect your breeding. It can bite the, you know, the lizards, the dogs, you know. These are the things that you have to consider as well. But if you're enclosing them, then you will spend a little bit more in, for the food compared to free ranging them, but you are secured that they will not be uh, disturbed or uh, eaten by the predators so you have two options you have to put them inside the coop or you have to free range them but in my case I would like to suggest that you have to free range them once in a while and then during the night you have to secure them in the coop and you will see here that there are so many eggs that are actually uh, being laid by the hens and uh, these eggs are collected every day so the moment that the, the hen will sit on the eggs, will start sitting on the eggs, that, that, that's the time that you will return that. Because uh, if you will allow these eggs to just be placed in the basket, chances are they will eat that if there is no hen sitting on it. So that's it. And of course, we have to make it sure that our water with vitamins and from time to time, we have to give them uh, antibiotics if they are sick that's very essential so in this case i am sure that we can be very successful in native chicken farming because uh, uh, i mean the market of this is actually very in demand very high compared to other you know other animals So they are eating now the azola and this is very important in breeding your chicken as what I have observed. And another thing that I would like to, to tell you about breeding a chicken is that minimize the number of rooster. Uh, I decided to have one is to three or one is to four. So there are three roosters that are here and they have 12 hens and this is already good. And do not overcrowd them inside the breeding cage because that's not also uh, good, that will affect them. So I decided to use my incubator and this incubator would, would somehow help us producing a lot of chicks. And uh, right in the other pen, we have so many chicks as well. And I'm so happy about this. And uh, we are actually now self-sufficient. 
of course, I am planning also to buy some chickens from other farm because this will not be able to sustain, I know. But the, the, fact, the thing is that we were able to upscale the level of uh, awareness about the, the native chickens. I mean, uh, patronizing the meat of these native chickens because this is very healthy. This is less uh, in cholesterol compared to other chicken breeds. And uh, since that they are already, they're also eating this uh, asola, their meat is really very clean and delicious. Lean meat, I should say. So these are the things that we can share with you. I hope you will continue to like and share our videos. And if you're not subscribed to the channel, Mayhem Di asked you to please subscribe and hit that notification bell because we are uploading very informative videos. Shout out to the members of this channel. Thanks a lot for your support. See you in my next vlog only here at Dexter's World.